Congratulations on pay-per-view for all of you who attended here at the War Grounds. Thank you so much for all of you covering the event during the holiday weekend. We thank you for all of you tuning in around the world on pay-per-view. We thank you as well. But I want to thank this man for a memorable performance here at the War Grounds. A two-time WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World. New Orleans needs to be very proud of this man because guess what? The champ reigns supreme yet again. Regis Progray in 11th round knockout over Jose Cepeda. Regis, congratulations. Yeah. My goodness, talk to us about your performance. It was mesmerizing. You came into his backyard, you took out the crowd early in the fight, and then you finished it in spectacular fashion. Um, first off, I just I just want to thank everybody. You know, um, man, the dude was tough. Jose Cepeda was definitely tough. When you, when you lean up to the fight, when you get here, um, the week leading up to the fight, you always, in, in your head, you kind of always think about how the fight will go. But I would have never thought that fight would have went that way, you know. Um, he was, I, I really take my hat off to him. I feel like he will be a champion, but it's just not his night tonight. Um, it was, but he was, he was definitely tough. Did I hear correct in the post-fight interview that you said with Raul Marquez, I believe you stated that this was the toughest guy you've ever fought. You fought everybody. Is that what you said or did I hear wrong? Yeah, he was definitely, I think he was definitely probably the toughest guy I fought. Yeah. yeah. Before I go over to the media, why so? Um, I mean, he, he took a lot of punches. Um, you know, he, he did hit hard. Don't you? I mean, you, you can tell by his knockouts, he does have a lot of power. He was, um, you know, he was quicker. He did have a good jab. And he was just, you know, strong. He was, he, he definitely was strong. So yeah, he was. I feel like he definitely probably was my, probably one of my toughest opponents, if not my toughest opponent. All right. If you have questions for Regis Progray, raise your hand. Also, have to acknowledge Sam Kabatsky, Richard Schaefer, Bobby Benton as well, a part of Team Progray, ladies and gentlemen. If you have questions for Regis Progray, by all means, and state your media affiliations. Mohammed Mubarak with the Electronic Permanent Report, EURWeb.com. Tell us about the strategy that you came into that first round with. Did it work out evenly until the middle round? Or how did it go in your mind? Um, well, first round, I, I wanted to come out. My, my coach was telling me, go ahead and box him. You know, and um, I just knew he was looking for that left hand. I know he has big power in the left hand, so he was looking for that left hand. So for me, I did want to, I definitely was watching that left hand, especially early. Um, he caught me with a few of them late, but of course later the body is more tired, so it'll take some steam off of it. So um, the first round, I was just kind of, you know, looking for that, but then he was hitting me with some, some hard jabs. Um, and then I think probably by the second or third round, I started kind of moving my head, and he was he was missing a lot of punches. When I started moving my, my head movement, he was uh, the jabs was going over my head. All it hit me, all it hit me on the top of my head. And um and then after that, after a few rounds, he kind of caught on to that. So then Bobby told me, listen, start boxing again. And when I start boxing, that's when I start running into punches. And um then you know 11th round, I, I caught him, and that was it. Steven Cudeño, KOR Sports. Congratulations, Regis, uh, on winning the championship two-time. Uh, during the fight, <clears throat> did you feel Cepeda was getting maybe a little weaker? You were breaking him down, maybe to the body towards the end the last couple of rounds. Did you feel he was slowing down and that maybe you could get the, the stoppage before the yeah, time was up? Yeah, 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 definitely, for sure. Um, I remember one good body shot. I hit him with a real, real good body shot. And um, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I hit him with a real good body shot. And he kind of, you know, like, he just kind of stopped balling up. And then it was like right at the end of the round, but then he still was hurt the beginning of the next round. And um, I think that was like the beginning of kind of breaking him down. I probably should have, maybe I could have got the stoppage a little earlier if I would have, you know, stayed on the pressure. But, but yeah, I just, he started getting weaker and I felt that he was, um, I won't say that he's a front runner, but I felt like my win was better. So, you know, in a, in a fight, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious about what's going on. So I'm looking at the, the, the cards and I saw 10 round, then 11 round. I was like, all right. And then I asked, I, I told Bobby, I was like, listen, I feel like, you know, what you think the score is? You think that I'm winning? He was like, oh, it might be closer. You know, we here. We, I have a lot of people in California, but at the same time, he's from California. So, you know, he was like, the score cards might be closer than you think. So then I just picked it up and um, then I got to stop with you. Congrats. Brad. Regis, uh, Cynthia Conte, uh, you've told us even uh, in your fighter meetings that you wanted to box because you wanted to box smarter. You started doing that, then you started getting into a brawl, exactly what Zapata was going to do. Right. Your corner was telling you, box. 
Right, right, right. Did, did that register with you, or did you just want to keep continuing with the firefight? No, um, he just pulled me into it a little bit. You know, for me, I'm, you know, I got, I guess I got the cojones, like everybody say, and you know, I just want to fight with him too. But that's kind of what he likes, and yeah, just when I boxed him, when I when I used the jab, it was, I won't say easy, but it was definitely easier. So, um. So yeah, just I want to go out there and box. And I mean, I think I feel like with this performance, I feel like I showed a little bit of everything. I, my, my gas tank is good. You know, I can go 12 hard rounds, at least 11 hard rounds. Um, I box, I brawl, I bang. So I feel like I showed, I showed a lot, a complete package right now, tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Can you pass it? Okay. Thank you. There you go. Regis Miguel out of here with Fight News. First of all, man, congratulations on the victory. The fighters that avoided you, you think they're going to be uh, calling you out now? You think you're... Yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah, of course. I mean, listen, th these things, this thing here is like, um, you know, gold, right? <laughs> so everybody wants them. So, um, yeah, that, of course, the last three years, nobody said my name. And now I'm, I have this again. And, of course, now everybody will start calling me out. So it is what it is. I'm, that's just how I go. That's the boxing game. I'm not, I'm not tripping about it. Regis, congratulations. Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV. Regis, walk us through the KO sequence and let us see it through your eyes. What do you remember about the moments before the fight stopped? Really, I asked Bobby, man. I really, I, I was like, man, what hit him? What I like? What was the? What was the like the the knockout punch? Because I didn't know. I just saw him hurt, and after I saw him hurt, then I just kind of went for the kill, you know. Um, but that. Sometimes I know he is tough, and earlier I thought that I probably should get an earlier stop out because he was cut. And when the referee said, oh, he's cut, and it was caused by a punch, then I was thinking, all right, I'm gonna, um, maybe I'll stop him. But of course, he had Stitch Durant, so they, they got that stuff, like, you know, they got that stuff under, under um, they got it real quick. So, but yeah, with the, I don't even know, I just, I, I have to look at the video, you know, it was just kind of, it just happened. Oh, here Richard's next question. Uh, Rich Ortiz here with the Fighter's Voice. I was going to ask you, um, like I always ask you, mm -hmm. now that you have a battle, will you take on Jose Ramirez or Josh Taylor? But I just got a text from Jose. He said, tell Regis I'm proud he won. I was cheering him on and would love to face him. No question for him, Richard. Just have him get some rest, and I would love to share the ring with him. Any Ooh. response for that? That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, I guess, right, it's no response to that's cool. Listen, Jose Ramirez been, been ducking me for five years, and now I got this girl that he won't fight me. So, but listen, that's cool. We can now, listen, all right, it's cool. Thank you, Jose Ramirez. We'll fight. Listen, I want to, like, I want to start um, changing my personality because, like, I have an accent, and people think I'm, like, ignorant. Like, so I want to start being more humble. I, I, I'm really trying to be more humble and stuff like that now, so I want to kind of calm myself down. Next question. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Y'all want me to be no, cocky no. and arrogant? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Yes, sir. I think y'all want me arrogant? Like, all right. <laughs> but what my, 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 my mom here, she keeps think, telling me. I think, I think we did pretty well with Floyd. This is Mark Taft, the Yo, former head of HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. By the way, by so the let's way, do it again. Sure. Come on. All right. If, listen, you, you heard it, right? Because I could be cocky and arrogant. If y'all want me to be like, I could be cocky and arrogant. I could say bad words, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. I just want you, I just. We got the judges' scorecards. Just you know, it was eight two, eight two, seven three, at the after ten rounds. Okay, so I was doing yeah, okay, cool. by punch. Yeah, okay. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> when did you uh, when did you start feeling like that power in that left hand was? the one that you needed to use throughout the fight? Well, I mean, I felt like that from the beginning, but you know, he was, both of us have that same power in the left hand, you know, so I was watching out for his and he was watching out for mine. And um, early in the fight, he was kind of, you know, he was kind of staying away from me. I hit him a few times, on, like on the side of the head, but it wasn't really on the button. So um, it just it just took a little while so I can start, start finding him. To the left over there. Regis, congratulations on a big victory. Uh, Took the belt, taking the belt back home to New Orleans. Uh, now moving, moving into that, into the fight. When did you realize that you had the puncher hurt? I know he's a slugger. He comes forward. Uh, did you know somewhere through in the mid rounds when he started backpedaling away from you, trying to move away from your power shots? Did you realize, hey, I can go in for the kill. I can finish it. Or did you just uh, realize it in the minute? No, I mean, boy, I, like I said earlier, I hit him. I remember I hit him with a, a hard body shot, like a left hand body shot. It was it was real hard. It hurt him, and so he started backpedaling. I knew that. I knew that hurt him. But of course, we fought through that round, and you know he had a break, and I, I came back um, after that. But he kind of healed up after that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's all. Moving forward, what do you want next now? 
an immediate unification, or are you just looking to knock down all the big names at 140 and maybe even move to 47? No, 47. No, no, no. I want to. Um, I want to stay at 40. I, I, I changed my my diet around. I can make 140 probably for the rest of my career if I really want to. Um, I let Richard kind of take over as far as maybe we do a unification. Maybe I fight for the WBA. Maybe I do that. Maybe um, Jose Ramirez. He's a mandatory. Um, everybody know if I had a hit list, Josh Taylor would be first on my hit list. Um, so it's. It, I think it's a lot of big opportunities out there for me, but. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they say. Yeah, it's one of the most loaded divisions in the sport, so uh, there's certainly no shortage of names. Uh, that means big fights. Uh, Ramirez is the WBC mandatory, so we're going to see if we're going to do that, or uh, if a unification bout offers itself, then we might do that. And as you know, um, unification bouts trump mandatories, so we're just going to see what's the best. But. Today is really, as I told some of you, and I mentioned it to Regis in the, in the rain, today we're going to start the official start of the campaign. Uh, I have no doubt, based on the skills, uh, his footwork, his, 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 his uh, punch power, everything, that he will become pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Yeah. And you guys are going to see, and in order to become that, you need to have the right opponents as well. And he's at, it, at the right time, in the right division, with the right opponents, and he is the best of the division. Now that all mixed together is the recipe to become pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Yeah. 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 We actually, uh, I'll tell everybody, we have two mandatories coming up, because Teofimo Lopez is right after already, because he fought for an eliminator. So oh. if, you know, if we have to do the Jose Ramirez, Teofimo Lopez mandatories, that's one route, obviously unification is another route, but you know, the next two fights could be already lined up. Wow. Big fight. Yeah. Big fight. Next question. Right over here. Last question, Richard. Is this, uh, are we looking at the formation of another World Boxing Super Series at 140? Um, well, I think sort of like being they've done that, but in a way it is because uh, I think these guys all want to fight each other, and I think that's the beauty of it, and we want to work with everybody, so we're not going to shut any doors like, I'm not going to work with this, and I'm not going to work with that, some other promoters do that, we don't, we're willing to work with everybody to give Regis the biggest fights, that's what he deserves, and that's what he's been waiting for. Thank yeah. you so much, Regis, <clears throat> lastly, <clears throat> a lot of people that know your story, Go back to 2005 now, after a night like tonight, two-time WBC 140-pound champion. Go back to 2005, what would you tell young Regis Prograde that was being evacuated from New Orleans and going over to Houston? What is something that you would tell him if you had a chance to talk to him? Um, if I talked to myself back then, I wouldn't even believe it. I really would. I would not believe it. if I can talk to my when I was 16 when the storm hit. If I can talk to my 16 years old, I would not believe I would be here. Um, of course, I'll just say, man, keep working. Because one thing about boxing, uh, well, I'm all at I'm all not here, but you know, I came up. We all came up in the same gym in in Texas, and um, with them, with the Charlo twins, with me. We wasn't the people that was on nobody's radar. Kind of people kind of just looked over us. You know, I don't know if y'all know that about the twins, but you know, I was in the same position. They had a lot of in that gym in Savannah gym. They had a lot of dudes that that was at the top, and we just like how it just it, it's funny how things just kind of switch around. And because we just worked, we just worked and worked and worked. And that's all I did. Like I, I literally I bust my ass. And so for the last three years. Yeah, we talk about 2005, but now just for me, for the last three years, after you know, after the whole when I lost my belt, um, I just put my head down and worked. That's it. I knew I was gonna get to this. You know, I believe in myself more than like I know people believe me. I know my wife believe, my daddy believe me, my made my mom and them, um, but nobody believed me more than me. I mean, nobody could believe me more than me. Like I bust my ass every single day, and you know, I, I bought a big ass house in Texas, and I have a gym, and I literally go out there every single night, and I train, and I train, I train. So this isn't a surprise. Like maybe a surprise to the boxing world, but this is not a surprise to me. I knew, you know, I can sit up here and maybe be emotional and cry, but it's not because this is not a surprise to me. I work my ass off for this, and that's how it is. Good. I just want to thank as well Marv Nation and Legends Entertainment. Uh, they really did a tremendous job promoting the show. 
I want to thank them. Uh, I had uh, people call me throughout the telecast. Uh, it looked spectacular on air, so uh, they did a great job. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for a great night in boxing. And well, my only question is, what's your message to all the fans? And I'm pretty sure all the new fans that you gain out here in Carson, California. Um, I just, I'm just thankful, man. I'm just, I'm just very thankful, and you know, I just. Want people to keep following me, you know. I, like I said, I told you I want to be a little. Y'all told me I want to be a little humble, but y'all told me be cocky. So I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do it now, cause I can be real cocky. I can be real arrogant, and I got an accent and stuff like that. But I, you know, I want to be humble. I want to be humble tonight, but you. Well, no, I the guess holiday, I'll be no, the holidays are here, so you're gonna be humble. You're through, the best at turning the it on and turning it off, and you know what to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah. you. Right, right, right. Two you. more questions from the media. Yes, last question from the Fighter's Voice, Regis. Um, you know, I've had you on the show over and over again, and I've said it not because you're saying it now, and you're asking yourself, who should you be? You, I compare you to Robert Garcia because you will get an honest answer every single time. You ask Regis Progray a question, he's gonna give you 100% the truth. So if I'm giving you advice, be you, because you got you here, and you're a two-time world champion. All right, guys, yeah. Thank you. Great. All right. Hey Regis, Ryan O'Hara, Legends TV. Uh, congratulations on your on your win tonight. Uh, my question for you is, based on you know how, how Josh Taylor has looked in his last few fights and and uh, you know your training regimen, do you believe that you're you know a step above Josh Taylor at this point? Yeah, I do. I want I listen. I, I want my get back more than anything. Um, but I feel like right now I feel like I'm the man in the division. So um, I do want to fight him again. Um, but I do feel like I'm better than him. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I feel like I, I, I've been feeling like that. You know, this is I told you. This is not a surprise. I've been feeling like I'm the best at 140. I've been feeling like that. You know, it's it's sad in boxing to where it's like you take a loss, and I still feel like I want to fight. But you take a loss, and people just they 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 sweep you under the rug. You know, it's like I had to climb my way out of hell, out of boxing hell, and I, I you know I'm back here. But for me, it's not a surprise. I told you, it's not a surprise. I work my ass off every single day for three years to get back this. Um. So if, with your question, yeah, if, if me and him, if the, the fight present itself, then yeah, and um, I'll definitely be for sure. Congratulations on a great performance. You did great, and nobody can take that from you. My hat was off to you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank one you. more question from Cindy Condi. Cindy, you got one more question. It's not even a question. Um, Regis, when we talked in the back, I said this is your debut here at Wargrounds. You brought it. You brought the essence. You brought what Wargrounds is all about. Congratulations. You made a thank big you. statement and you made history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys.